Hello, my fellow investors. Okay, return on assets. Yeah, everyone knows this ratio and how important it is. And there's a lot of good content out there how and why to calculate it. So let me divide this ratio into two main perspectives. The first perspective is the company's durability, or let's call it the lender's perspective. The second perspective is the company's efficiency, or let's say the investor's perspective. Each perspective is totally different and therefore needs to be calculated totally differently. So in this video, I'll explain the lender's perspective, and in the next video, I'll explain the investor's, investor's perspective. So first, you might ask, why should the average investor care about the lender's perspective? The average investor who's watching this video probably isn't planning on opening a bank in the near future. So the answer to that is, one, for the sake of knowledge, and two, an investor wants to buy a bond for the interest or preferred stock for the dividends needs to look at the company from a lender's perspective and not from, an, from the investor's perspective, since they're buying the security because of the yield and the return and not because of the company's growth. And therefore, they need to understand the durability of the company more than the efficiency of the company. So let's jump into it. Let's say a real estate company wants to expand its business and buy more assets, and the company needs a loan to buy more assets. So it goes to the bank to get a loan. So what interests the bank? Does the bank care if the company is more or less efficient than other real estate companies? No. The only thing the bank cares about is the company's durability. How secure is the bank's position that the company won't go bankrupt? How durable is the company in paying the interest? The more the loan and the interest is secure, the lower the interest rate the bank will require from the borrower. And vice versa, the higher the risk, the higher the interest rate the borrower will require to pay. If the loaner sees that the company's return on assets, let's say it's 30%, then the loaner knows that the loan and the interest is secure. But if the return on assets, let's say, is 5%, not only is the loan not secure, but also the loaner can't lend at a 7% interest rate since the borrower won't be able to pay such a high interest rate. Okay, so how would the loaner assess the company's durability? So in the case of a real estate company, the income comes from the rent and the loaner will try to assess the rent income on the asset the company wants to buy with the loan. If, let's say, the borrower has a different business, let's say a restaurant or a shoe store, the loaner will try to assess the company's income from its asset they want to require or, or let's say, they want to just open a business or build another business without buying an asset. Okay, so how would the loaner calculate return on assets? So I made a video of the five main returns we can use to calculate return on assets. I'll put the link in the description. So in a loan situation, the loaner will want to calculate the net operating revenue before interest and taxes and not, not any other return. And the reason for that is because the loaner is getting the interest before taxes. The company pays taxes only after what has to pay interest. So the loaner would want to check return on assets what the company is returning before its taxes. And, and the company doesn't care for the return after the interest since the, the loaner is the one paying, getting the interest. So they would want to calculate the return before taxes and before interest on the asset. That's the return they would want to check out. There's no reason the company should care, the loaner would care if the net operating income after taxes and after the interest is different. Does, it doesn't, that's not their issue. So the truth is the loaner should want to calculate the operating return before interest and taxes but after capital expenditure since the borrower will need to pay maintenance to keep the asset going. So if the loan would calculate um, the return before capital expenditure, it might be bad because if the company needs a lot of uh, capital to continue to, um, to run the asset, then the company might be in a problem to pay back the loans. So the loan would calculate uh, the return on assets before interest and taxes, but after cap capital expenditure, but not all the company's capital expenditure, let's say what they're paying to, to, to expand the business. Only the capital expenditure the company needs to maintain the asset they're taking the loan on. Now, what if the company has a few loans? Let's say a loan from a bank, uh, let's say a mortgage, and besides that, the company has a bond, which they're paying a coupon. So there's a senior and junior debt. A senior debt means that the lender has the first lien on the asset in case of bankruptcy. A junior debt is second in place after the senior debt. So if a company goes bankrupt, the senior debt will be the first to take assets to get back the capital. Then the junior debt gets their share and anything that's left over goes to the shareholders. So usually a bank debt is more senior to bonds. 
And that's the reason why a bank's interest rate is usually lower than a bond, since the bank's capital is more secure than the bond, because they're the first ones to get anything back in case of bankruptcy. So let's say there's a senior and junior debt. It won't be sensible for, this, for the senior loan, loaner to calculate return on assets before the interest to the junior debt, since the company has to pay the interest also to the junior debt. So although a bank loan is senior, let's say, to a bond, and the senior bond is senior to the junior bond, all these, loans will, all these loaners will want to calculate return on assets after all the interest the company has to pay to all the other loans, besides the interest they're going to pay on this loan. So I'll explain. Let's say a company wants to take a loan from a bank, and the company already has a bond that they're paying $100,000 interest a year. The bank would calculate return on assets by calculating the operating revenue before taxes, and after the interest to the bondholders, but before the interest on the bank loans. And although the bank loan might be seen into the bond, it doesn't make a difference in the company's ability to pay the interest on the bank loans. The company will still have to pay each year the interest on the bond. And if the return on assets before the, the interest on, on, on the bond is sustainable for the company to, to pay back the interest on the, on, on the bank loan, but after the interest on the bond, the company is not sustainable to pay back the interest on the bank loan, so the bank has to take into consideration the company will be paying each year the interest to the, to the bond. Okay, so let's get everything straight. A bank or bond holder should calculate return on assets by calculating the company's operating revenue after maintenance capital expenditure, but before taxes and interest. If there's two loans, let's say a bank loan and a bond, the loaner should calculate return on assets by calculating the company's operating revenue after maintenance capital expenditure and after the interest to the other loan, but before taxes and before the interest on their loan. A preferred shareholder should calculate return on assets by calculating the company's operating revenue after maintenance capital expenditure and after all interest payments on all the other loans, since the preferred dividend isn't secure like a loan interest or a bond coupon. And the preferred shareholder needs to calculate return assets also after taxes, since the preferred dividends aren't tax deductible, and the company has to pay dividends only after it pays the taxes. So basically, we divided this to three. If there's one loan, the company the, the, the return assets should be calculated by the ne- the operating revenue before interest and taxes. If there's two loans, so it should be calculated by return on assets after the interest to the other loan, but before the interest to this loan. A preferred, a preferred shareholder needs to calculate after all the interest to all the other loans and after taxes and that, that and the return that's left over after that, that will be the return on assets they need to calculate. Thank you very much and I hope you enjoyed this video.